Слава Україні та слава Канаді! My name is Yulana Plauschuk Pidzameki, and I'm a proud member of the Ukrainian Women's Organization of Canada, Toronto branch. Welcome to our conversations with current members of the Ukrainian Women's Organization, Windsor, Hamilton, Toronto, and Toronto West branches, as part of a series of interviews conducted to mark the organization's 90th anniversary. The Ukrainian Women's Organization of Canada, in Ukrainian, OUK, was one of the first Ukrainian community organizations in Canada. It was founded in 1930 by groups of young women affiliated with the Ukrainian War Veterans Association of Canada and is part of the organizational system of the Ukrainian National Federation of Canada. OUK Hamilton branch was established in 1937. Its membership is proud of their wide range of activities, attracting people of all generations, Ukrainian and non-Ukrainian alike. In this cozy chat, they discuss the success of their Ukrainian cultural artifact display, symbolizing the branch's Ukrainian cultural ambassadorship in the broader community. Our interviewees describe how each item tells a story and how the interweaving of these stories has both built the organizational family and brought in people from the surrounding community to help create a sense of us. Hello, ladies. Thank you so much for allowing me to come and visit your hall. It is wonderful to see you in the heartbeat of the hall, which is the old room, and to see this wonderful display. It's just incredible, because I know that this branch is one of the oldest in Canada, and very active branch. You have a wonderful dance troupe, there's Muno involvement, and it's been a very, very active branch from its very beginnings. And this is pretty special to the hall, because I don't think any other hall has something that you have here, which is these beautiful displays. And it continues into the foyer. It's all the way, when you come in, you see these beautiful Ukrainian Plesanke and Vyshetia and all this. And I was just wondering, how did the idea to display Ukrainian items out in front come to be? Well, it kind of all started with me. And in that way, I was able to get mannequins because Pani Letvin, who was our Holova at the time, had it in her mind that in this oak room, we should be able to display our costumes and uh, what better way than on mannequins. And at that time, I was working in retail and I was able to get them to donate, no charge, to oak four lovely female mannequins, which I brought into the hall because it was a ladies' dress job, mm -hmm. and that's what they had, and they were going to do away with them. And of course, you can't wave a bargain in front of a Ukrainian's nose. She was right there to say, I'll take them. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so Pani Lettman was very happy mm -hmm. to get the mannequins, and everybody was very happy with that, because now we had ladies that needed to be dressed. Mm -hmm. So with that, the ladies took on a project undressing the mannequins. And that was the beginning of the display that you see not only here in our oak room, but also in our showcase in the front lobby. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful. They're really lovely to see. And you come in and it's your struck right away. And as you look at them, you must see that every single piece in those display cases has been touched by Ouk. It's like you know that each piece has a story and that you know where each piece came from. Do you have a favorite piece? I remember the man. I spent hours on the computer. It's very difficult to find a mannequin with a face yet. And it took many hours. So the mannequin itself? Yes, for that male. Yeah, I said, so many females, we got to get a guy in there. Right on. And I tried through the mall and, and approached all the men's clothing stores, and they would not give us a male mannequin. Right. So it was up to Natalka, and she did get us. But her mannequin was a brand new one, where mine had been dressed in the, the clothes of the store. Mm -hmm. But that was OK, because it didn't cost us anything. Right. So that's how this room started with the mannequins. Mm -hmm. and then. Everybody took part in dressing them and embroidering the blouses or going into their closets or in their special places to bring out all of the treasures that they had. And that's how slowly it started to develop into a display here in Oak's room. But that didn't end her vision because Pani Lethman had a vision of something more. She realized after a while, and she looked around and 
Not only did we have the ladies, but she said, you know, this is wonderful, but nobody sees this except our own members. So that only fills part of that. Her vision was to display our culture and our traditions so that everybody who came to the hall could see them. And that led to her dream of having a showcase in the front lobby. But it all started here in our oak room. In the heartbeat where the magic happened. That's right. Right on, where all the work and the magic happened. That's right. Amazing. In the process of putting this room together, it didn't look like it did today because we updated everything and we renovated this room. But in the beginning, whatever we had, we put up on the wall and displayed it as best we could. We didn't have a portrait of Olya Basarab, but we talked about it. We had a little one somewhere, but not a big one. One day, I walked into Uno's office next door. There, in the garbage bin, was a portrait. I lifted it up and said, what is this? Oh, that's an old portrait. Nobody wants that. I looked. It was Olya Basarab. I had a fit. I said, you are kidding. You're going to throw this out? Well, nobody wants it. I want it. I proceeded to tell them what a big goof they made. This was not to be thrown in the garbage. I took that portrait and had it reframed. And today it hangs as the honor point in our room. And it hangs behind me over the fireplace. I'm very happy that I walked into that room before garbage day because I would not have been able to rescue it. Yeah. And that's the story of our Olya Basarab. Amazing. Everybody who sees it says, my goodness, where did you get it? Oh, I don't always tell them the story of where it came from. <laughs> it's a lovely portrait. And as being the patron of Oak, it's, it's, it's important to have Absolutely. a portrait of her for sure. Sure. Oak does a lot of events. So Oak Hamilton's a very active branch. There's a lot of things that you've done over the years with, in a lot of initiatives, whether it's fundraisers or benefit concerts or Milan Kid, different events, uh, cultural events or Urochesti events, more, more solemn events. But do you uh, have an event mm -hmm where you really found it impactful, that you really were proud of that event, you really loved your work with that event, that you remember being particularly fun or particularly impactful? I remember the hard work, but... Yeah, the <laughs> hard work. <laughs> we had did so many wonderful things. Mm -hmm. To me, they all come together as being part of us. Mm -hmm. And it was always a pleasure to work through it. At the time, it was hard, it was a lot of work, but at the end result, it was always beautiful and we always felt so satisfied. And lucky that we could do it, and we wanted to do it, you know. Right. And they were always successful, too, right. very much so. Oak has a very illustrious history in terms of education, especially the cultural education, for example. The, the, the displays in front are part of a cultural education project. And I know that there's an initiative that Oak did to uh, bring books into libraries mm -hmm. uh, in the public library system here in Hamilton, yes, as I understand. Right. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because that's a very interesting initiative. I personally really love books. My brother Andrew uh, wrote several books. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of the titles now, but... Um, I have the Cossack Bibliography. <laughs> I have that one. That one and Yaroslavna. Queen of France, yeah. Queen of uh, France, yeah, that's right. Yeah, anyhow, he wrote several books and we took those and put them in the public libraries, which was, uh, you know, a good thing for us to do, for sure. As Ukrainians, we always sense that, you know, we want to learn about our, each other. We always think that it's our, it's our kind of sphere of, of influence. But now that people are absolutely interested in Ukraina, want to know more about it, want to know more about the history, and we're getting a lot more respect, um, it's, it's lovely that, uh, that we do have books in English. So it's important to have uh, English language literature as well about Ukraina. And I'm so happy that Uk had that initiative to look forward and say, listen, it's not all about just our community. Mm -hmm. We should be showing, showcasing us further afield. And it's true because I live in a condo and my neighbors are all English. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know anything about Ukraine until all of this fiasco has started over there, this horrible war. And now there's two ways to go. Either you are Ukrainian or you want to be Ukrainian. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. I read an article about a, a man who's 91 years old, served on, in the British Army, 
And he says, like it or not, we're all Ukrainian now. <laughs> you know, so because he's like, either you decide that you are, want to be a free person or you don't. And it's one of the two. They didn't realize what Ukrainians were all about mm -hmm. until all of this started. And all of this knowledge is now spread all over TVs, radio, newspaper, prints all over. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how everybody, oh, you're Ukrainian. And they light up. Yeah. Their eyes light up. They see the little ribbon of our sign and they say, oh, you're Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. That never happened before, That's and right. now they do, you know. And you have laid the foundation, right? So all the books that were written, all the almanacs, all the, you know, the yes. amount of history gathering that Oak did and, and all the work that they did we had got not for naught. It's actually very important, and, and we have a base, a very, very solid foundation from which to present, right? So it's not just like, oh, now we're, we're Ukrainian. It's like, well, no, we've been Ukraine for a very, very long time. <laughs> we've been around right? for a little while. Thank you for finally noticing. I think I maybe have answered that question, but do you have a reason why you're so proud to be an Oak member? Is it because of the cultural element or because of the events that you do or is it deeper? I have been in the hall since I was a, a baby, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in the hall and it just seemed natural to, I was in Dot East Moon and then I was in Muno and then of course I was away for a while and then I came back and came into Oak. I was thinking actually about this question. I was watching the news and seeing the news about the war in Ukraine and I started to cry. <sighs> mm -hmm. And I thought, my family has been here for 120 years, over 120 years. And so I thought, why am I still so attached? Why do I have that love for Ukraine? Mm -hmm. And part of it is because I was brought up in the hall and we had all those organizations that taught us what being Ukrainian meant. It's all about. And I remember back to my childhood when I came to the hall and all of the women, Hanya Lekvon was very warm, very loving. She shared her talent with us. She taught us pesinke, she taught us how to cook. She was just such a wonderful example. She was that golden thread that kept us all together. And all of the women, like your mother-in-law and your mom and Sharon's mother, all of these women, they supported us, they validated us, and they taught us. Mm -hmm. That's why OUK is, has been so important. All of the organizations of the UNF are so important because that's what it did for us. You know, it, it, it uh, told us who we were. It's a real teaching. It's right, that's yeah. right. I learned so much joining Oak too when I came. I didn't realize how much I didn't know right. until I joined the right. Oak. But I came too as well yeah. through my husband. He was a no no member from age five. He came yeah. with his parents. Mm -hmm. So I had really had no knowledge of the organization until I met him and we started courting and he brought me to Chaika's rehearsal and that was our date. We would sit and watch Chaika <laughs> rehearse at the old hall on Barton and Sherman and that was an evening to go, but I fell in love with it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I found my origin, even though I was Ukrainian by birth, but a different side of being Ukrainian and it's been a learning tool for me ever since been a wonderful thing. It's made me what I am today, good, bad, or indifferent, but that's what I am, you know. Right. Through the hall and through the association mm -hmm. of all the members and, and the various groups. Because right. yeah. it's like the it transference built. of knowledge, right, that's is right. so much easier in a community environment. It takes a village to raise a, a person, and so when you have a hall that can raise your youth, you have a hall where you can gather, you're safe, you feel comfortable and even comfortable learning, right? Because you might not know something, but that's okay, you can come and learn. You don't know how to make this in kid, that's okay, come and learn, right? There's a sense of that support in getting access to your culture where you might not have it at home. So that's a very important piece too, it right? It was, it yeah. was, it's terribly important. And you need the people to do that, right? You need the people right. to, to, you need the, the women to be able to. Like Natalie's, Natalka's mom, her embroideries were exquisite. I mean, what's not to love about? And her talents were so wonderful. She was able to share all of that with all of us. It was just mind-boggling. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful this all is. I have to learn how to do all of this because it's just too beautiful not to know. And that's where it came from. It's the women who were ahead of us that were, as you said, so warm and mm -hmm. welcoming and wanted to pass it on. And piss and care, my, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, hopefully will be writing, but my grandkids write piss and care, and they love it, you know. And it all started here at the hall. Yeah. Beautiful. Panyana Basi, how did you start at the hall, you Natalie? I think my story is a little bit different because uh, we lived in Burlington. Mm -hmm. And at that time, 
We had no car, so coming to Hamilton was by bus. Mm -hmm. My first remembrance of Ono is at 14, first year high school, going to Chaika. And there were Uniuzzi from St. Catharines and, mm -hmm. of course, from Hamilton. And I didn't know anyone because I was out of town and they all knew each other. Yeah. So my cousin lived not too far, five blocks. So I went to his house after the first rehearsal when they dropped me off and said to Mikhailo, I said, Mikhailo, Mama, she wants that I dance. I said, I don't know anyone. I don't know how to dance. I said, uh, how about I sit here at your house for the two and a half hours, <laughs> then take a bus back home and pretend pretend that I went to practice. Well, Mikhailo called my mother up immediately and said, the Thalka's here and she doesn't want to dance. <laughs> my mother said, send her back. And that's how I started. I ended up being a very good dancer. I followed this lady with the ballet. Oh. And became one of the soloists in dancing and spent many years helping Slauko Jerry Kloon teach the girls. When I look at that display outside the store are Chaika's uh, memorabilia, their pictures, and some of the costumes that you see in the display in the foyer, my mother made. My mother spent many, many hours making it very authentic. My mother also did a lot of Piss and Kid, all those on television, in the parks, showing people Pasinke and talking about books. I don't know if you remember, but they made a big, big stand to get the Ukrainian encyclopedia into the libraries mm -hmm. yes, because everybody called us Russian. Yes, they At did. At that time, we used to go to Ottawa and demonstrate from Muno, yeah. you know, to the embassy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you went I on was. any of those trips. Yes, I was. And now we have to do the same thing again, it seems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? How... Times have changed. Yeah. And we used to have these embroidery balls. Do you remember those? Oh, yes. The yes. 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 And I cannot forget those contests between the Ukrainian organizations. <laughs> and my mother would say to me, Natalka, me prodale, we sold the most tickets <laughs> for you, but I, I don't want to mention the person, okay? <laughs> He wants his daughter to win, so <laughs> is it all right if he? I said, that's quite fine, you know. The beauty contest? They were popularity contests, yes, they were called. Yes. Popularity, the ones that sold the most tickets. Anyway, they were fun times. In Muno, our boys fixed up that hall, did all the work. We ran teen dances. Yes, they did. And then when it came to Ouk, I guess I was dragged into Ouk because of my mother. My mother was president for a number of years and everything was geared to Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. You know what, Natalka, it was a good life. I wouldn't change a minute of that. When I joined in 59, I was just a young, married, and the family was yet to be. Mm -hmm. So that kind of took me away for a while. Mm -hmm. But this was second home, and my husband, I often, between Pony Lettman and my husband, Michael, my late husband, I said, all you two need is a bed and a shower, and we'll never see you, because <laughs> you were always here, you know. It was just part of what you were. We're going to the hall. I'm at the hall. I'm at the hall. If you said you were at the hall, everything seemed to be okay. Mm -hmm. It was okay, because you were at the hall. Whatever you were doing, that was fine. You were at the hall. <laughs> That's right. And it's funny because I volunteer with books at the hall. And my husband also is like, where are you? I'm at the hall. <laughs> so it continues on. And so Absolutely. thank you so much for sharing all these wonderful stories. They're very important to share. And thank you very much for inviting me into the heartbeat of the, of the, of the hall. And thank you for telling all the stories. Thank you. Thank you. The Ouk Windsor branch was established in 1934 and is well known for its many community building programs, including an impactful annual post-secondary scholarship established in 1986. Our interviewees share how the vision of their president at that time has led to tens of thousands in scholarships to date. As this valuable program continues to grow, Students from within and beyond the Ukrainian community preparing for higher education become part of the Ouk family, a warm feeling one of the participants, and now a branch member, talks about here. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. It's wonderful to be here in Windsor with our 
lovely OUK members here at the Ukrainian National Federation Hall. I understand that you sponsor an annual scholarship fund for local students here in Windsor for post-secondary scholarships. Can you tell me how the idea of the scholarship came about? When was it started? How does OUK support it? Like there's so many things that I'd like to know about it. Well, we welcome you here, uh, Patty, to our, uh, to our hall, and we're glad to share that information with you. The first scholarship tea was held in 1986, but the idea came before that. And the idea came from Pani Luba Kazak, who was the president of a UK here in Windsor, and she started the ball rolling. And the first time before we had our first scholarship tea, of course, we had to raise the money for the scholarships. Right. So we set out by holding garden parties. And the garden parties would be held at various members who offered their homes. And we would invite not only OUK members, but women from the community as well, too. Oh, how nice. And then over tea and lunch, we'd collect money for the first scholarships. So we had enough to give a scholarship in 1986 for the first time. And since then, the fund for scholarships has grown in a variety of ways. There are still donations that are being made to the scholarship fund, but we also were given a very nice inheritance to be used for the scholarships as well. The daughter made it in memory of her parents. Right. And we were very, very fortunate with that. And since then, we have also had other people make donations in, in memory of their relatives. Some of them uh, are have been uh, OUK members or UNA members. So we're very, very fortunate in that. And of course, the donations still continue to come in. The fund has continued to yes. build. And, and grow. So. The other yeah. source of income initially, or at least in all of the early scholarship teas, is we would have a guest artist. And the artist would give us a painting. And we would raffle off the painting. And that always brought in a tremendous amount of money. Oh, that's perfect. And uh, there were lovely pieces of art. I've got one of my own. That would be a big fundraiser, and of course we would have a donation basket out too. We started, I think, actually asking people, you know, the non-students for five dollars, and then we found it was much, much more to our advantage to just put a donation put back out, and out. people were extremely generous, and yeah. they have continued to be. Oh, that's great. How many of these scholarships have you given out over the years? We have given out from the Ukrainian women 79 scholarships. Wow for a total of $50,350. That's excellent. In 36 years. They started, the very first scholarship was $250. Then they gradually went up. They plateaued at 500 for several years. And since uh, 2012, we have been giving $1,000 to each student. But then the other fund that Leisha met, mentioned where we got this bequest, we're holding the money actually in trust if we close down, it goes to the University of Windsor. But they could not specify that it went to a Ukrainian student. Right. We could. So we've used that. So we've given out an additional 27 scholarships to them for another $27,500. Wow. What's the criteria or the qualifications for, for the students that are applying for the scholarship? It's based on marks. It's based on their leadership uh, ability, activities within school, what they do as far as activities in church or in the community. And they also have to have um, a major impact on the uh, Ukrainian heritage within the community. So it's about five different criteria. Is the scholarship earmarked for any particular area of study? No. No, no just... just you know, the community involvement. Is there a panel of judges? Yes, Patty. Generally, it's usually the uh, OUK membership. Usually between 10 to 12 people will, will listen to the uh, uh, scholarship applications. Uh, and if we have to make a decision then uh, to narrow it down, we will do so. I think the scholarship program is wonderful. 
when do you give these awards out? In September, usually the third Sunday or so. I know I was here two years ago, three years three. ago. For before that, COVID. That, yeah, before COVID. And it was a wonderful afternoon. And I know the kids that were receiving the scholarships were very, very grateful. Yeah. Who are some of your past recipients? Are they newer OUK members or have they become OUK members? My daughter has become an OUK member from having received her scholarship here. And so she's also been involved in Sonia Schneck um, camps and she's now the Facebook page creator for the, yeah. Yes, yeah. For the organization. Hello, my name is Rosanna Natalia Guimon and I am one of the recipients of one of the OUK scholarships here in Windsor-Essex County. I originally received my scholarship in September of 2011. It took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do with my career, but I eventually graduated from the University of Windsor in October of 2019 with my Bachelor's of Social Work degree. I'm currently working with the Learning Disability Association of Windsor-Essex County as an assistive technology trainer. I work with students with learning exceptionalities, uh, with basic computer training. Um, so this would basically be anyone with uh, learning disabilities like ADHD, uh, dyslexia, and the like. Uh, so I train them on basic computer training and specialized apps that help them with their learning exceptionalities. I became a member of OUK after my scholarship in 2012, and I have been actively involved ever since, so about uh, 10 years with the, with the OUK down here. I also uh, was one of the main counselors for our Camp Sonyushnik here in Windsor-Essex uh, from 2013 until 2015. I am currently involved with uh, the UN, uh, Ukrainian National Federation of Windsor Facebook page. I am also assisting one of the local organizations here with settling the newcomers that are coming over from the uh, current incursion by the Russian government in Ukraine. Um, I also help out fairly often with some of the events. Uh, so with our scholarship teas, I work with our Jordan dinner, we do uh, different events, uh, whatever I, I help out, try to help out whenever I can. Um, receiving my scholarship really uh, kind of cemented my foot in the Ukrainian community. I am a multi-ethnic background. Uh, I'm also a French Canadian, German Canadian, and receiving this scholarship really helped me find a community in Windsor Essex. Beforehand I had been involved in Ukrainian dancing, but before that I hadn't really been involved in anything else. So working with OUK and with UNF really helped me find a community and I'll be forever grateful. Oh, that's that's fabulous. She also does our uh, camera work sometimes yes. for the organization as well too. So she's multi-talented in that direction and we're very happy to no, have that's, her on that's board. That's fabulous. We have had past recipients also come back, either showing their artwork or performing for us. Yeah. And a few of them have come back to be our guest speaker. So you've maintained some of those relationships yeah. with, we try to. with those recipients. Mm -hmm. right. That's a really important part of all of this is that some of those relationships be maintained. And I was so glad that Rosanna had received the scholarship that I thought I needed to give back. And so that's why I joined OUK. Fabulous and we're so glad you did. <laughs> One thing maybe we can add, and it's just a minor part of it after giving out the scholarships, is that the scholarship tea itself is a wonderful part of the afternoon as well. We have finger food, sandwiches, baked goods available, and not only do we invite the parents and the relatives of the scholarship recipients, but we also invite the community at large as well too, and they show up as well to show their support for these young right. people. So we're yeah. very pleased so with that. So there is engagement with the, the broader community as well. Yes. yes. Which is really important. Yes. It's important that they know who we are, we know who they are. Exactly. That's wonderful to hear. 
that was uh, very difficult when we weren't able to have um, the tea because of COVID. So what we did the following year, when we not only honoured the new recipients, but the ones from the year before. So it was kind of nice that we were able to recognize them too, even though that wasn't the, the year they had received them. Right. And just another thing too, uh, when we began, we only had offered one scholarship. Well, there's been years when we've offered up to five. So whomever applies and we you go over their criteria and everything, we've managed to give out a, quite a few. And the criteria grew to be offered not only to students who were going to the university, but we added uh, students who were going to the community college as well. The other change was initially the student had to be going to the University of Windsor. And then we realized we had students who were going to other schools because what they were studying wasn't yeah, offered at Windsor, of yeah. their course of study. So that has broadened also. I'm sure the students are really grateful for, first of all, the opportunity to apply for the scholarship, but the recipients, I'm sure, have sort of shared that information with their friends at whatever schools they're going to as well. That, you know, geez, I was really lucky. I, got, I applied for this scholarship and I was, I was one of the recipients this year. So again, it just, it just pays, pays it forward into the community. Right. Well, it's just very nice to recognize these students for the hard work that they have oh, put absolutely. in. Oh, and, and give them some personal recognition. Right. Well, ladies, I thank you very much for sharing all this information with us. I hope to come back to Windsor soon. Maybe I'll come back for the scholarship Come back tea. for the tea. <laughs> You're always welcome, Patty. Thank you so much. The Ook Toronto branch was established in 1931. In this unique interview, two sets of mother and daughter members talk about the role of the Domiuka organizational hall as a second home, dim, in their lives. It didn't matter how many times the hall relocated, it was always a place of daily involvement cooperation among the affiliate organizations, lifelong friendship, and for Ouk members, sisterhood. It is so motivating to hear these women talk about the mentorship they experienced from older members and about how new generations, daughters, granddaughters, even great-granddaughters, are following in their footsteps. Hello ladies, thank you so much for joining us here at the Domivka today at the Toronto Domivka. It's wonderful to have you here to talk about uh, your experiences with Ouk. And uh, we have today, we have Pani Sharon Malachowski, we have uh, Stacey Sesmuth, we have Anne Fadoon, and we have Diana Fadoon, uh, longtime Ouk members, and actually mother-daughter teams. We have a mother-daughter team on this side and mother-daughter team on this side. And uh, I know that you have a very long history with the Domyevka, and I'd love to hear more about that, about how the Domyevka was a part of your life, how your lives revolved around the Domyevka. Well, I started at the Bathurst Street about 1944. We were there till about 46, and we bought a college in Shaw Street, and we were there till about 48, 49, and then we bought college in Spadina, and we moved in in 1950. And 1999, we bought the Demilka, where we are right now, and we had it uh, reconstructed, renovated, and we opened up the latter part of 2003, where Bishop Boretsky blessed the hall, and we had our official opening. Mm -hmm. So lots of homes, but lots of houses, but one home, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. So how did your lives look when you were younger? How did that look when you were at the Domyovka? What, what, was, what was life all about? <laughs> well, <clears throat> for me, it meant uh, Ukrainian school, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then Saturday morning, I was part of Doris Chmuno, and there was dancing and choir. Mm -hmm. So a lot of time was spent at the hall. Definitely everything mm -hmm. evolved around uh, Una, Toronto. Uh, Dad was in Una, Mom was in Ouk. We all had to come. If it wasn't a concert of some sort or a tea or something, we were all there. 
Nothing else happened. We were at the hall. Seven days a week. <laughs> almost, almost. <laughs> Including our babas. My baba was always in the kitchen making pedo hair. That was a huge treat when you got to sneak into the kitchen. The ladies were so kind, they would want to feed the children. So that was, that was wonderful. That's very sweet. Mm -hmm. So everybody got fed, everybody was dancing, had somewhere to go, right? And Pani Fadun, so I know that you had many different iterations of the hall. You've come, you know, through many different halls. And, and how were you involved at the hall? Well, it was like Sharon said, if it wasn't for, at that time, Muno meetings, then as I got older, I was at Oaks meetings and then a representative to UNO. So I have been somewhere in the top part of the organization doing something. So I was always involved. And sometimes it was Monday choir, Tuesday this, Wednesday this. You almost could bring your bed to the hall <laughs> and just stay there. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, being a member of Awuka and being at Toronto for, for a while, I know that you could definitely, I was here last night until 11 o'clock at night sorting books, so I know it's very much a part of your day. Once you come in, that's it, you do not leave. It's part of your existence. Yes. And Fanny Stasma, do you have anything to, to add about the hall that you remember that, uh, how it played into your daily life? You were at the, you were at the Akreditivka as well at the hall at Gone College, right? So you couldn't go far. <laughs> you, you work there. The credit union was part of the college street. Right. There was a little room. That's where we handed out money and collected <laughs> money. So that was nice. Uh, also, I, I helped Nell Nelkonachne in the library, a phenomenal library. She did a wonderful job. Uh, and she also had uh, lectures there and cultural events, so I was involved in that. And meetings, of course, Ook always had monthly meetings. And when you're on the executive, you have an executive meeting. So that's two days a month that you're, mm hmm <laughs> So you work there, you volunteered there, you slept there, you ate there? <laughs> Everything was there. Right? Everything, Everything was, was there. there, yeah. It's lovely to hear that because you have a community to go to and you had friends and you had, uh, you know, things to do. And this is so important, the bonding that yeah. occurred while we were at meetings or somehow involved with each other. We bonded. We became friends. We became lifelong yeah. friends. For instance, Anne and I, worked fashion shows together. How beautiful is that? And we've been friends for all our Ook lives. We've been best friends. It's true. It goes way back. Yeah, we go way, way back, yeah. It's amazing. I would say the majority of our friends are from what started here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. When we started at Una, for whatever activity, be it through Doris, be it through Kalina, Muna, Ook. It's a sisterhood. Right. Yeah. So you became lifelong friends from the get-go, right? And it goes through you from one generation to the next. It kind of continues on and your friends mm -hmm. keep close and your family keeps yeah. close. Everybody can keep close. Well, exactly. Yeah. And this is home. Right. This well, is Dom home. Our second, Domiuka. Dim Domiuka. And then Ook really was the heartbeat of the Domiuka. I know that Ook was in the kitchens doing this, uh, controlling the money, right? You were there within the Kreditivka. So how is Ook the engine room uh, in many ways? How, how did they help in the operations and the management of the Domiuka? Well, we managed on our own because <laughs> we did the Shvetchana and Shvetvacher, and uh, we had a big crowd on College Street. The tables were just long tables in the gym from one end of the wall to the other end. And it was just expected of us to hold that. So I think we were the ground people of putting on a lot of things uh, at the hall. In terms of even raising funds, right? I know that those events yes. brought in funding. Yes. They brought in funding to the hall. Many of the things that had to happen at the hall, right? So whether it was an operational issue like fixing stairs or painting <laughs> or whatever, I think Oak contributed quite a bit to yes, that. So we did. Absolutely. And not only that, but we also have been very generous in our donations yes. to Canadian charities mm -hmm. and to Ukrainian charities. And let's not forget that. We are a very giving yeah. organization. 
Absolutely. And, yeah. that, and that's something also that makes our kind of our Canadian Ukrainian element as well. The fact that we are in the Hromada, but we're also a Canadian uh, Canadian organization. Yes. And so, you know, needs are whether they're in Ukraine or in Canada, children are hungry here, children are hungry there. And you have to make yes. sure that you take care of both. And I think that Ouk does that very well. I think Ouk does look beyond just Ukraine. It looks at their local community as well. I know that there was a breakfast club charity that Ouk contributed to, I think, the LAMP organization. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And in Ukraine, we send parcels yeah. to our yeah. twin city, Zolochyo. We support Jirila, which mm -hmm. is for disabled children. Mm -hmm. We also support Kanvalia for abused women. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it happens everywhere. And one of our members heads Kunvalia. Yeah. Isn't that lovely? That is lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Marta Buric. Yes. So you have, the, the, so this community is far reaching. It's not yes. just yeah. insular. No, it's a matter if you're, you know, uh, if you're not an Uk member, but if you're a woman, we appreciate what that existence is. Yeah. yeah. And we help where we can. So yeah. that's, that's lovely as well. And those events were that what brought in a lot of that funding, right? So you mm -hmm. could help. Are there any events that you particularly remember that were memorable for you or that had that effect on you that you'll never forget them because they were either so fun or so meaningful to you? Well, I do remember. Oh, could always have either a spina vachata, a svatvacha, Mother's Day, and Munoklina would always be serving at that time in full costume. We would serve, we would help to collect donations, and then we would sing so needless to say, a number of our ribbons or our blouses I can would have, by the end of the evening, end up with either borscht in our ribbons, <laughs> gravy on our sleeve, or something else dribbling down our <laughs> jupe on there. Mm -hmm. However, it um, brings us back to our roots. This is what Junochi uh, Hurtok did, and we just carry it on. These are retired, but we're not. Right. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> yes. Lovely. <laughs> we, we do it, and we host a variety of different meetings and dinners. And like Stacy said, our donations now tend to go outside of our little bubble here mm -hmm. to those around us in our neighborhood. Right. And those events, they, they, there's so many. I can think of yeah. like Spina Serchana, you have Mother's Day, you had uh, fashion Bingos. shows. Bingo, Bingo. Fashion shows. Tell me about the fashion shows. Those oh, were epic. Yes, yes. the yes. fashion shows were something else. Yes. Contemporary fashion shows, of course. Anna and I looked after that. Contemporary fashion shows. But we also had a fashion show that featured Canadian pioneer. Pioneer. Pioneer clothing. Yes. Really. It was fabulous. And then we had a fashion show that featured Ukrainian nobility. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it was fabulous. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, another favorite event of mine was Pristalinya. Uh -huh. Yeah. I remember uh, Vera K and I did the chardash <laughs> with tambourines. <laughs> and again, we spoke about bonding. Vera Kay and I bonded beautifully, and every time she'd see me, she'd say, Stashu, and hugs and kisses till, till, till the end. That bonding was there over a chardash dance. <laughs> well, it doesn't take much, right? <laughs> Just a dance, right? When you're dancing cheek to cheek, I guess, right? <laughs> it's lovely. She was fabulous. She'd have vatched me who? Yeah. Do you remember? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. We've had such talented people <laughs> in our organization. <laughs> it is unbelievable, truly. Did you have any, Sharon, that you remember? Do you remember that Chardash dance? Oh, no. <laughs> I remember being so excited to watch my mother do the runway because she was modeling in the fashion show. And then I was able to watch my granddaughter model in the fashion show at another time. It was, you know, so two yeah. generations, yeah. generations and generations. Of these role models, right? Yeah. These role models, yeah. these yeah. role model yeah. women that would, you And know. I, uh, uh, Diana's granddaughter as yes. well, I remember. Daughter, yeah. granddaughter, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, the whole family got together <laughs> on this. I remember walking in a fashion show too for a week. I remember, I did, I did. My uncle made these crazy large boots because he was a koval. So it was very nice to, you know, to have those experiences in the fashion shows. And chayke, the chayocho, oh, the, the chayochke you did for Mother's Day with. Yep. The, the garden party. The garden so parties garden with the hat, the hats. Yeah. 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 Which one is your? You have so many to pick from. <laughs> oh, I've got so many, but I was going to say that the generation before us, they were just wonderful in the kitchen and doing anything. Uh, there was pani stafirni, pani nestaroska, pani solvashi, and tarabush. There was so many, and I think we got the initiative from them to just pick up and go. And they always relied on us, and they always listened. If we said something, they took heed. So I miss them. Pani Maksemi with her hat always boom, hitting her hat. But they were, they were really good. I, I do. I think of them a lot of times as we're doing something and just say, oh, I remember what she did over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so many wonderful memories and so yeah. many wonderful friendships, yeah. Yeah. right? And that sisterhood aspect that, you know, yeah. once you're here, that's it, you become part of the sisterhood. And that's, you know, you, they're not going to go easy. So that's why you're always here. <laughs> well, thank you so much for, for sharing these wonderful stories and for allowing us to hear these wonderful moments and getting a little glimpse into what Ouk was at the hall and here at the branch. And thank you so much, ladies. Thank you very much for your time and your stories. Відділ ОУК «Торонто-Захід» засновано у 1936 році. Членкині, які беруть участь у цьому інтерв'ю, представляють ряд поколінь та хвиль імміграції, починаючи з 1958 року і до сьогодні. Кожна з них родом з іншої частини України, хоча могла народитися поза її межами. Співбесідниці описують умови, в яких вони вийшли, а також вирішальне значення їхнього сімейного життя та виховання для їхньої української ідентичності. Розповідають і про те, хто привів їх до організації, чим їх привабила ОУК, та описують різноманітну діяльність, якою вони займалися. Пані з гордістю зазначають, що тепер до організаційної роботи до них долучаються і молодші члени родини. Доброго дня всім вам. Ви знаєте, дівчата, при нашій роботі в організації ми ніколи не маємо часу сісти і поговорити про себе. І я думаю, що це добра ідея сьогодні. Дуже добре. Давайте поговоримо про нас, бо в кожного з нас є своє життя, своя доля, і та доля якось привела вас до ОУК, і ми об'єдналися разом. І тепер хочемо почути кожну з вас, як ви сюди до нас попали. Пані Ніна, я думаю, що ви були перші, правда, з нашої групи, що ви приїхали? Я так думаю. Я вже тут 23 роки ага. у нашій організації. Мене привела моя дуже добра подруга, пані Галина Капаловська. І вони були тут члени, довго, дуже довгі члени. І так само її чоловік був, її сестри. І вони мене привели сюди. Після смерті мого чоловіка я була в депресії. І то мене дуже спасло, бо я тоді стала дуже енергійна. Почала працювати для угу. волонтером. І... До речі, як тоді організація виглядала? Які проєкти ви робили? Проекти були День матері, День батька, на свята робили, різні проекти були. Mm -hmm. Але найбільші проекти було то, як пані Та Таня була головою Прокопів. Прокопів, так. То ми тоді робили вечерниці, і меланки, і різні дуже гарні і забави були. Все. Чи ви маєте якісь фотографії? Маю, маю. Тут я граю меланку. Угу. Цікаво. <рес> Гарне волосся у вас. Ту я модель щось. О, ви, окей. Дуже гарно. Дівчата, дивіться. Тут на відкриття пам'ятника Шевченка в Отаві. Ага. Тут, як Валя Горовенка була головою. Угу. 
Скільки у вас тоді було в організації? Приблизно те саме число чи більше? Я більше було. Я думаю, було 49 тоді нас. 49. То на половину більше? Так, на половину більше. Тут ми маємо засідання вечором. Тут як приїжджав отець патріарх. Патріарх. Дайте дівчата там. Так. А це, як ми їздили в Садбері, на Івана Купала. На три дні ми їздили з організації. Я не знаю, оця. І пам'ятаю її. Тут ще цікавий акцент з пані Ніною. Цікаво є те, що ви взагалі виросли в такому українському дусі. Чи ви є чистокровна українка? Ні, я не є. Мама литовка, тато українець. Він вивчив мене говорити і всіх наших моїх братів і сестрів. І так само мою маму вивчив говорити по-українськи. Бачите, тепер навіть приїхавши з України в далеку Канаду, ви себе знайшли як українка тут. Так. Бо тато був дуже великий патріот. І він сів собі на крісло, а ми мали на підлогу сісти. І він читав Кобзаря, читав різні книжки, різні історії. І ми всі мали вчитися. Він нас вивчив усіх. І тепер от маємо пані Олю, яка є українкою з Польщі. То ви приїхали в час Солідарності, напевне, так? А ні, я з Кориса, я 58-го року приїхала. О, ви ще тоді, то була післявоєнна імміграція. Так, нас депортували з Холмщини, бо я родилась в Холмщині. То як мама була, як мама родилась, то була Україна, а як я родилась, то вже була Польща. Але в 47-м році, тоді як переселяли Лемків, тоді і нас переселили на німецькі землі, я там виростала. А в 58-м році приїхала до Канади до діда з мамою. І як ви знайшли шлях до ОУК? Пан Петро Ковальчик мене припровадив до УНО. А він був головою УНО Торонто Захід і він вас підключив до ОУК. Ясно. І, напевне, пані Марія буде наступна з нас, що приїхала до Канади з України і прийшли до УК. Розкажіть, як ви сюди попали? Я приїхала в 2004 році з колективом, нас покликали на гастролі. Нам допоміг компанія «Міст», панство «Кисіль» нас запросило, і ми приїхали. Восьмеро чоловік нас було. Всі бандуристи? Ні. Це був колектив такий, троє бандуристів, соліст. Дует і композитор, який нам компонував, він організатором був. Ми виступали, ми приїхали сюди, зупинилися спочатку в готелі Святого Володимира. Більше ми були належали до УНО місто, ми в цьому приміщенні, не в цьому, а на Калич. Ми там давали дуже багато концертів і були задіяні в хорі. Відразу таки почали брати участь в церкві Святої Покрови, співати в хорі. Таким чином ми отримали багато знайомств і нам було легко, тому що у всіх церквах майже ми виступали і нас всюди вже знали, почали організовувати з часом концерти. Це був кінець року і почалась коляда, якраз різдвяні свята. І нам церква дала рекомендаційні листи, ми почали колядувати. І таким чином колектив дав про себе знати, а особливо я більше буду зупинятись на тріо, тому що ми співаємо з ним до цих пір. Тріо бандуристів, ще дві дівчини. Ми з Франківська, з музичної школи номер два. Коли ми приїхали сюди, в УНО, місто, там організовувалися великі каравани. Кожного року це було свято українське в Уну і також було на Кристі в домівці. Майже цілий тиждень проводилися такі і концерти, і одночасно був як шведський стіл буфей. То ми і намагалися допомагати готувати страви, правда нам за то платили. І після обслуговування буфей ми бігли виступали так тричі на день. Це було складно, але було дуже цікаво. Ми ще були молодші значно, то був багато років тому назад. Пізніше, як я потрапила в УНО «Захід», у 2003 році я почала працювати в школі УНО, 
І тоді я приєдналася до УНОЗАХІД, тому що школа належить. Рідна школа належить у Лонзахід. Те саме, так як ми попередньо виступали на всяких святах різдвяних, великодних, потім Блурвест Вілич фестиваль на оселі Гаксон, свята Івана Купала, відзначення Голодомору, потім у всіх невеличких містах навколо Торонто, в провінції Онтеріо ми також виступали, Ніагара. Дуже багато, дуже багато, дуже цікаве насичене життя. Два роки вже назад, коли припинилися виступи, коли припинилося нормальне життя через ковід, то було якось так дивно, що трапилося. Зараз трохи розхолодження, але нова трагедія в Україні. Але я надіюся, що Україна переможе і всі так думають. І от навіть 12-го числа ми повинні виступати. До речі, пані Ірина Костирко помогла зорганізувати ту подію. Ми підтягнули. Так, має виступати симфонічний оркестр, наше тріо, і ще там виконавці. І всі пожертви будуть йти на Україну. Так, пані Ірина Костирко посприяла тому. У вас якісь фотографії є? А, ну тут, це ми тільки приїхали. Такі молоденькі. Слухайте, це наша школа. Це ще пан Ковальчик. Кого привів Ковальчик? Прошу подивитися, який він був. Дуже багато свят. В УНО-Захід ми разом робили з учнями. Залучали і старших, і маленьких діточок. Пам'ятаєте Ліни Костенко, свято, свято до Василя Стуса, до Шевченка. А потім, як ми на 13 число Маланку робили, прошу, переодягалися так само. Традиційно. Це було дуже веселе життя. Ну, і пані Ірина, ви десь приїхали в той час? Так, я приїхала, як кажуть, називають четверта імміграція. Так. Правда, довгий час виконувала домашні обов'язки, виховувала своїх внуків. А потім моя сусідка по будинку, мені стало дуже цікаво, що вона набагато старша від мене і десь кожен йде. Зникає. І десь їде, і десь завжди розказує, де вона була. Я кажу, як ти так подорожуєш? А вона каже, в нас є така організація жіноча. Ходи подивись. Я прийшла, і мені дуже подобався колектив. Дуже було весело. І почала працювати разом з дівчатами. І так до сьогоднішнього дня. В якому році ви долучилися? В 90... В 98-му. І так до сьогоднішнього часу працюємо, стараємося, чим можемо, допомагаємо. У вас, до речі, з пані Ніною і пані Олею найбільші обов'язки, бо на вас кухня ціла. Всі наші обіди. Всі гроші збираємо. Всі смачні рецепти. До речі, на фестивалі українському, на Blur West Village, то люди вже далеко поза українською діаспорою знають про ваші борщі. Ми вже маємо своїх кастомерів, які приходять і питаються за борщі. Навіть є в нас такий артист великий. Який приходить по борщ. Так, так, ми маємо своїх клієнтів. Ну, я думаю, що після того Таня вже прийшла. А Таня взагалі в нас українка з Сербії. Ага. Так. В якому році, Таня, ти прийшла? Таня до Канади приїхала у 2005-му. Але до організації я долучилася десь, може, 5 років тому. Я з Сербії народилася. На Україні була тільки два тижні у своєму житті. Але виросла у родині дуже такі патріотичні, так що нас навчали. Ви українці. Ну, батьки з України чи з Сербії? Батьки так само народилися у Югославії. Мій дідо десь, може, 100 років тому приїхав з Бучача з України. Так що вже батьки народилися в Югославії, тоді ми вже теж так. Але та любов до України то така сильна була в нашій родині. І ми були дуже активні у українській громаді у нашому місці. І до сьогоднішнього дня мої брати, вони є там дуже-дуже активні. Так що коли я приїхала до Канади, ну просто та була любов до України, я хотіла бути в українській громаді. 
І тоді Бог мені дорогу зробив, що я пішла до української школи, рідної школи, і працювала з Оксаною у Хочу садочку в Монтесорі. І тоді Оксанка мені, ну давай-давай, до організації. А от-от якраз фотографії наших дітей. Наших дітей. Ми готуємося до Різдва, і то була в нас майстерня Миколая. 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 Угу. Я, ми якраз... Так, Місимо так, тісто, так, перше куки всякі робили печиво для Миколая, бідні діти думали точно, що вони для Миколая печуть, а потім варили вареники для Миколая. Так що, ну, а тут якраз в нас цілий склад нашого товариства, ще до того, як прийшла О, Лариса так, до нас, ходили, наш відділ, і певне Тані тут ще нема. До речі, от подивіться, як і пані Ніна вихована в українському дусі, і Таня зовсім не в Україні, але тепер, по суті, вже яка третя, четверта генерація людей йде, тобто ваших дітей, внуків, пані Ніна, які народжені в Україні і, очевидно, вони теж долучаються до українства. Ми мали гуманітарну допомогу, що йшла на Україну, пачки сортували, Танін син був з нами і пакував. Допомагав. А, до речі, пані Марії син зараз воює, так, в Україні? Так. Солдатик. Так. Доброволець. Як бачите, нас мало, але ми сильні. І ми багато, що можемо робити. І ми робимо. І тепер, подивіться, кожна з вас доклалася до і тих гуманітарних допомог, які йшли на Україну. А тепер збираємося знову робити новий івент, наш проєкт «День мами», де будемо збирати гроші, які знову віддамо в Україну. Так що, дівчата, ми сильні. За роботу. Успіху нам. Успіху, дай Бог. І слава Україні. Героям слава. ОУК has been an active part of the broader community from its very beginnings welcoming all Ukrainian-Canadian women, as well as those from every wave of immigration from Ukraine. We hope you enjoy learning more about what makes OUK an inviting part of the Ukrainian-Canadian mosaic.